Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. This show is sponsored by our members who made donations. We'd like to give them a very big thank you. We have to cover the monthly costs of the radio station software, bandwidth, phone lines and phone calls to be able to continue with the radio show. And thank you for listening. Today my guest is Russell from the United States who takes LDM for hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Thank you for joining us today, Russell. Hi, Linda. It's a pleasure um, to be speaking with you. And, uh, yeah. So could you tell us, when did you first notice there was something wrong? How long ago was that? So first for me, it was with the, the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the cancer, it was back in uh, 2016, um, well, that's when I got diagnosed, but I, I had a, a, a lump on my arm near my elbow. And um, I had saw a lot of, uh, or I saw my primary care physician for it. And you know, I'm, I'm fairly young. I'm 29, I just turned 29, actually, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago on February 1st. And uh, so, you know, no one was thinking that it was cancer at the time. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's a rare chance that it could be. But uh, you won't know until you get it taken out or get a biopsy or anything like that. At the time, I was uh, busy working, and uh, I kind of, you know, drugged my feet a little bit to actually get get it, uh, you know, get the imaging studies that were requested and, you know, those type of things done, you know, just being busy with work. So it turned out to be about, uh, it was about 14 months later when I actually got diagnosed and um, and I that's when I got the cancer diagnosis, uh, the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's uh, called um, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, and it's a T cell lymphoma, and it's highly aggressive. And it's, it's you know they diagnose it as systemic because I had a lymph node, and um, it can end up anywhere and everywhere in the body very quickly. And um, you know by the grace of God, at that time I was uh, diagnosed as stage one. So that was uh, surgically removed. I, you know, I'm kind of taking a step back. So mm-hmm. that was surgically removed. That's how I was actually found out what it was. And so then they referred me to an oncologist. And uh, so I saw an oncologist and, um, you know, they recommended chemotherapy. So I did the chemotherapy, first line therapy, uh, CHOP. And um, so that, so that, in that in that context, it was adjuvant therapy from what I understand based on the terminology, because, you know, I had PET scans, CT scans done, you know, after that biopsy, and there was no other <laughs> detectable disease at the time. So it was stage one, and they said, oh, since this is stage one, and, you know, we think we, uh, you know, can, you know, take care of this with the first-line therapy, and it was like, a, they said, a 90% chance of long-term durable remission or cure with chemotherapy. Then uh, 10 months later, um, I uh, started to, get skin lesions that were just popping up. And I'm saying that now because I know what they are now, but at the time they just looked like, like little bumps. And, um, you know, they started on the legs and the arms and they got on the back and I had some on the face and um, not a whole lot on my face, but mostly on the, you know, the limbs and you know, trunk and stuff like that of the body. And it's like, well, I just want to go in and get this checked out. So I told my oncologist about it and, he saw some of them and he's like, oh, this kind of, you know, looks, you know, it doesn't look like anything cancer related, but then we'll recommend you to the, you know, the lymphoma, dermatology, oncological specialist. So, and I was kind of, well, what am I seeing this guy for? I mean, this doesn't look like cancer, but they just wanted to make sure. So I saw him and, um, you know, he's used to seeing these type of things. And, you know, it was kind of shocking to me when I saw his face because he was puzzled. He was kind of like, or not puzzled, I should say, but he was concerned that this was cancer. And um, so I did some biopsies there and they started checking lymph nodes and they found the lymph node in the growing. 
And it was like, oh, we need you to go, you know, and get this um, lymph node biopsied as well. So those biopsy results came back. So it came back as a recurrence for the primary uh, lymphoma, the anaplastic large cell in the groin. And um, then I had metastases to my skin. And with that, of that same primary lymphoma, then there was one of the other skin biopsies that was done. It was suspicious for another type of skin lymphoma called uh, mycosis fungodes. But they were kind of, you know, going back and forth because it kind of looked like the primary um, anaplastic large cell lymphoma and this other type. So uh, then the recommendations, you know, back to all those findings reflected, I met with my primary oncologist again. I was like, well, we have the second line therapy. We still believe there's a high chance to, uh, to cure this. Uh, and those were the, ter- the, the terms they used. And um, so I went through that and I did uh, four rounds of uh, targeted drugs called uh, Brentuximab, so monoclonal antibody. And um, within two um, cycles, I got a- another remission. All the skin lesions, you know, went down and the, the lymph nodes in the groin were gone. And then um, the oncologist said, well, in order for us to cure you, uh, we need to get you into um, high dose chemotherapy with a stem cell transplant. So this is not just the, the normal chemo. I mean, this is like you know high dose. They give you enough chemo where they wipe out you know the, everything that's in your bone marrow and they rescue you with a stem cell transplant. So uh, so I I was like all, you know at the big you know kind of against that because I looked into a lot of. Uh, you know, the side effects and long-term stuff that's associated with that. And there's just a lot of risk and with me being young. And I, I was never in favor of doing that. And um, so my plan then was after I got the remission, you know, which the remission was done about uh, the, the, maybe the, the second cycle. And so I did two more additional. Then after that, my plan was to try to, you know, pursue some holistic type treatment and, um, to, to, to try to, you know, keep it away or whatsoever. But, you know, look, uh, shortly after that, maybe two to three weeks after I was done with that chemo, I started to get skin lesions again. So, I, I mean, that kind of shocked me as well. That was pretty quick. I was like, holy cow. Um, you know, I just got off of the chemotherapy. So I went back in, got some more biopsies. And, you know, sure enough, it was the same, you know, stuff in my skin again this, with this lymphoma. And it was like, well, now since I, you know, you know, it came back so rapidly. They were like, well, you know, if you don't go into this, you know, high dose chemotherapy with the stem cell transplant, we wouldn't expect, you know, a person with your condition and with the relapse and stuff like that to live past six months. So that was kind of, I was like, oh, wow. wow. So then, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So then, you know, this was, that was in January of 2018. So, I mean, I, I was, I wasn't convinced that that was going to, cure me because the data that they supplied for me, um, you know, the bone marrow transplant team and my primary oncologist, I mean, the data was showing a 30% chance of survival for three years, you know, and they were saying that's a cure. I mean, I, I mean, I, I was trying to be objective as possible and I mean, it just didn't pan out to me. I mean, I have a three year old and I'm thinking to myself, it's like, well, uh, how, how is this going to cure me? You know, and it, there's no data showing 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years. But I don't know. That's what they told me, and that's what the data said. So that's when I decided to, um, you know, not pursue any more conventional therapy. You know, so I stepped outside of the standard of care, and I went to a um, a, a clinic down in Mexico, a Chipsa Hospital, and I got some, um, you know, uh, treatment down there and some natural therapies and some immune therapy um, called colis toxins. And this is how we're starting to get into the point where um, I started my LDN. So after, you know, all those treatments and stuff I did down there, actually I responded pretty well. Um, You know, a lot of the skin lesions I had, probably probably about 95% of those were gone when I um, came back home. But right before I left Mexico, um, they had, tested uh, just normal thyroid panel testing, and my T, um, TSH was, like, really, really low. It was, like, I think it was, like, 0.05. And 
And so when I got back here, I got the results and they sent it to me an email and I saw my functional medicine doctor and he was like, whoa, this looks like Graves' disease. So I'm like, oh my gosh, here, this is, you know, I got another condition. I'm, you know, trying to deal with the cancer. And, and um, so he did some more tests and some thyroid antibody tests and TSI, those tests like that. And um, my TSI came back. It was elevated, positive for Graves' disease. So then that's when he had recommended for me to take um, LDN, low-dose naltrexone. So I started um, taking that, and he started me off at uh, 1.5 milligrams. And the plan was to escalate that dose over, uh, you know, go up 1.5 milligrams every two weeks. But what I found is that I wasn't able to do that initially. I mean, I, I mean, somewhat. I'll explain that a little bit. I went from I think it was what 1.5 to three in in two weeks, and I tried to go uh, to 4.5. Then in the next week, and I did, had some side effects. So I was like, whoa! I had to. I just felt so exhausted the next day, and um, you know, really, you know, really tired and fatigued, muscle aches and stuff like that. So I, you know took a step back and I went back to three and uh, took that for a little bit longer than asked my doctor, you know, if, if it would be okay if I just went to four. So I did that for probably a couple weeks. Then, then I finally went to the 4.5 and that's where I'm at now taking, taking that every night at bedtime. And um, some of the side effects that I've uh, experienced, um, I mean, it's very low. And that's one of the things I like about LDN. Um, there's very low side effects, but it did cause sleep disturbances for me in the beginning. And every once in a while, I have an issue where I'll find myself, you know, awake in the, um, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning or something like that. But I started um, taking some magnesium with that because that's been shown to help with sleep and stuff like that. So that's, that's actually been helping me quite a bit here uh, over the last couple months. And uh, so I've been taking it. So I, I, I don't know if I mentioned when I first started it. I started it back in, uh, was it April of 2018? So I'm coming up to about a year and uh, on the LDN. But other than that, I think those were all the side effects that I experienced. And one other uh, interesting um, synergy I think I experienced with LDN because I'm I'm doing this this holistic protocol, Gerson therapy, those t- different type of therapies for just the maintenance and uh, to keep this uh, cancer from coming back. And I'll kind of, um, I'm not jumping over the place here, but I'll kind of come back to the cancer part a little bit too, because I believe it's helping there as well. Mm-hmm. But um, <clears throat> so all the therapies, I mentioned I was doing this Coley's toxin, this immunotherapy, it's a mixed bacterial vaccine. It's a non-infectious and it's just a dead bacteria, but I won't go too much into the details or the history behind that, but it's a very old, um, you know, Dr. William Coley was the father, considered the father of immunotherapy, and he actually formulate, came up with the formulation for this mixed bacterial vaccine and found out that uh, what, he, what he saw is that uh, a patient that uh, had a sarcoma and <clears throat> of the, I think it was a bone sarcoma, and this patient um, was not supposed to survive this disease, and he actually, you know, Coley found him alive and well, you know, long after he was supposed to be gone. And he, uh, they, they looked into the records and found out what actually happened to him. But this man was breaking out into high fevers and chills and you know shakes. So he had this uh, uh, erysipelas infection, and and you know, Dr. Coley believed that that caused the tumor regression. And he, you know, being of a uh, scientists actually tried to reproduce that, and he was able to do that by infecting people with live bacteria, but he killed a lot of people. And this is doc- well documented in, you know, the medical literature, you know, with, with Dr. Coley and his results. But uh, so then he actually, you know, you can't kill people giving them something to treat a condition. So he actually, uh, you know, thought that, hey, what if I heat killed this bacteria and gave it to people? Then, you know, he didn't, you know, cause any mortality associated with it, but he did have uh, some tumor regression. And, um, but anyway, so that's a little bit of history behind this vaccine, but there's some literature out there 
you know, that shows that LDN um, has the potential to um, help the maturation of uh, dendritic cells. And, and, you know, Coley's this vaccine actually, um, it, it works through your dendritic cells. And, and um, from my experience, when I started taking LDN and continuing my um, immunotherapy vaccine, I, I noticed more, the reactions from the vaccine were more intensified. And, um, and it, that didn't happen before. Like, actually, I responded better. Like, one of the metrics for this vaccine is it does cause you to have high fevers. And, you know, I, I, I didn't really get them consistently. And, um, but once I started, you know, using LDN and, and, and the vaccine, I mean, it actually, you know, I was get, getting consistent, you know, high fevers and some record um, temperatures and stuff like that. But um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. So my, all my doctors were kind of on board with me using that. So I was working with my doctor. I just wasn't, you know, doing experiments and stuff like that by myself. But um, so kind of, uh, I think that's the gist of with the with with the vaccine. But back to um, with the the Gray's disease, uh, like I mentioned, I started it, taking it in April of last year, and about three months after that, um, in July, I had more thyroid testing done, and my Gray's disease went into remission. You know, just in those three months of taking LDN, so that was pretty. I was pretty sold on using it. And um, like I said, I still use it to this day. So, and, and, um, but my, so regarding the cancer, um, so like I said, I've been taking it and, um, you know, also for the cancer, but, and doing all these other things. But, you know, as I mentioned that my doctor mentioned in January of last year that I wasn't expected to live past six months without that high dose chemotherapy and stem cell transplant. And, so now I'm actually, you know, it's almost, uh, it'll be going on what, 13 months since that um, prognosis. And I had a PET scan back in September of last year, and that actually showed that I didn't have any, you know, evidence of you know, t- any tumors or anything like oh, that. So wow. that was a clear PET scan. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm, uh, you know, and, and I believe that LDN has helped as well, you know, like I said, especially with the vaccine and, you know, and uh, so I'm, I am, you know, going to continue to take that. And, and, uh, and another thing that's pretty interesting that from that I came across is, you know, there's a lot of talk now about cancer stem cells and circulating tumor cells. And, you know, the literature is saying that this is what causes a person to relapse. And, you know, what I found highly interesting is, um, you know, from some of Dr. Bahari's work and and some of the, uh, the information that's out there regarding some of the people that he gave LDN after they had, you know, successful cancer treatment, you know, even if it was conventional or whatsoever surgery, mm-hmm. and that people tended not to relapse after taking LDN. And the connection here. And this is some of the conclusions that I've been drawing just from some of the research that I've been doing. But um, coming out of uh, University of Michigan, Dr. Max Witch, I mean, they have one of the leading stem cell, cancer stem cell research laboratories, and they're kind of leading the field in this. But one of the cytokines, and these are just inflammatory cytokines, it's called interleukin-6, is what causes these cancer stem cells to go into proliferation cycle. And that's kind of what they found from their, their research and the connection with LDN is I've seen some of the, the data uh, that they looked at some of these cytokines that LDN affects. And, and this is in particular, um, I believe you probably know the doctor. I think you, I've heard you interview him. Um, he did some uh, clinical trials with fibromyalgia. Uh, with... Jared Younger. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. yes, that's his name there. And uh, one of the top of the, uh, on the top of that list, my memory serves me correctly, I believe it was tumor necrosis factor alphas, which is another you know, uh, uh, typical transcription factor or, or uh, cytokine. I forget specifically, but interleukin-6 is like the second one on that list. So LDN um, inhibits that. So I mean, I, you know, like I said, these are some of the conclusions I'm drawing from my research. But so I mean, maybe that's by one of the mechanisms by which 
you know, LDN may keep a person in remission. And uh, so, and I, I've heard uh, a couple of testimonials of people, you know, having, you know, in, in remission from cancer, especially if LDN, you know, bought that, put that person in remission, mm-hmm. you know, and they stopped taking it and have a relapse again. And there's a guy, I, I believe, I think his name is Kevin. I think he had liver cancer. And I believe you interviewed him and he mentioned the head in the, in an interview uh, with you regarding uh, the, the, you know, after he stopped taking LDN, the, the liver cancer came back. I believe his name is Kevin, but, um, but anyways, uh, I just thought that was interesting. Some other, you know, functional medicine doctors mm-hmm. have kind of reported some of the similar, um, similar, you know, things happening. But uh, well, that's, you know, it's yeah. totally amazing, and I'm sure people find you an absolute inspiration <laughs> definitely yeah yeah so uh, yeah i'm just very yeah i've been blessed and you know, i thank god for you know everything and you know the success i'm having and you know being in good health right now and so that's uh yeah i gotta well, give some credit there as well yes well <laughs> long may you uh continue in the way in which you are and lead a normal healthy happy life yes yes. (laughs) (laughs) thank you russell okay great and uh you have a great day and uh, thank you for all that you do and uh that's great so thank you this show is sponsored by our members who made donations we'd like to give them a very big thank you We have to cover the monthly costs of the radio station's software, bandwidth, phone lines and phone calls to be able to continue with the radio show. And thank you for listening. Any questions or comments you may have, please email me, linda, L-I-N-D-A, at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.